Greetings, comrades. Uh, we have some interestingly good news to do. Uh, on the 31st of May, uh, junior doctors in Madhya Pradesh had gone on strike demanding better conditions, including free vaccination for their kids and kin and uh, for uh, medical insurance coverage for their families, as well as protection from violence that has been plaguing doctors across India. Today, well, two days back, it has been reported that the Madhya Pradesh government has conceded to all their demands, which included a 6% hike in stipend per year. The government, the medical education minister, Vishwas Saran, has announced that a 17% hike in their stipend will be given. And with that, the strike of the junior doctors has ended. Uh, further details will be coming in and we'll be waiting for it. But this is an important landmark, I feel, because amongst other things, it shows the power of an organized resistance against the government. Some context is necessary here to understand what the junior doctors of India are going through. The junior doctors of India hold the same position as uh, medical residents in the United States, and they are an important frontline healthcare worker. Without the junior doctors' participations and even medical students who have been brought in to work in hospitals, India would not have been able to cope with the pandemic. Even in, even with the shortages and difficulties that we've been facing, it would have been infinitely worse were it not for the junior doctors and medical healthcare workers. However, as we all know, rather unfortunately, India ranks near the bottom when it comes to public healthcare investment by the government. <clears throat> Annual expenses barely touch about 1% of the GDP. Public hospitals are overwhelmed, understaffed, and the staff themselves are underpaid and overworked. A 24-hour shift an average junior doctor may have to see between 40 to 50 patients. As hard enough as that is, under the pandemic conditions, they have been, had just, they have been seeing up to 200 patients. A day. Even trained medical professionals are finding it difficult to cope with this pressure. One can only imagine what a junior doctor who would be new to this field would have to go through. It is only fitting that frontline health, healthcare workers like junior doctors, nurses, medical professionals be given an adequate protection, adequate compensation for their sacrifice in containing the pandemic in India. However, the Indian government <coughs> has been insensitive to their calls. Priority has been given to the Central Vista project instead of our public hospitals, which could have used that 20,000 crore which comes to about $3 billion investment in upgrading their infrastructure and paying back salaries. Whilst, <coughs> whilst junior doctors have been striking in Madhya Pradesh and several other states as well, the similar strike nearly got called off, had just gotten called off in the state of Andhra Pradesh, where about 3,500 junior doctors had given strike notice, demanding better conditions. Andhra Pradesh government did not let them get to the point where they would have to strike and simply conceded to get demands before they could even get there. So definitely there is a certain fear. The pressure is working in the government. Perhaps it is hoped that they will finally give some respect to the junior medical, <coughs> to the junior doctors of India, especially now when they are having to deal with the pandemic. On the other side, we have the ASHA workers. Now, last year, 6 lakhs, that is 600,000 ASHA workers had gone on strike, demanding better conditions, PPE kits, and payment of back wages. Last month, in the month of May, it is being reported that ASHA workers again threatened strike. Now, to those who don't know, ASHA workers are the frontline healthcare workers of India who are essential in giving medical services to the rural population and to the urban poor. 
without them, some of the most vulnerable population in India would be without any basic medical care. Even here, it is being reported that despite their importance, Asha workers do not have adequate essential PPE kits to safeguard their own lives. And compensations declared by the government have been declared to be a pittance by their leadership. <coughs> so, we are in a situation now where the government has decided not to prioritize the very people on whom we depend to combat this pandemic. It remains to be seen now if the government will finally wake up or do we need more strikes and more struggles to wake them up. Perhaps it may come to it that we may have to go for a nationwide strike of healthcare workers before the government actually takes this with any seriousness. Now, in the last budget, the Indian government had announced a 137% hike in uh, expense for healthcare. <clears throat> However, there is a certain trick to this. The actual budgeted expense uh, to the Department of Healthcare and Family Planning <coughs> is at about 73,000 crores, which is a mere 10% increase in the 2019-20 budget. How it comes to the 137% increase is when they budget together with expenses uh, given to the Department of Sanitation and Water Purification and Ayush, that is for the yoga and homeopathy <coughs> and uh, for the Ayush scheme. So, so it is by fudging together this data that they come to this inflated amount of 137% increase. Truth is that even at 73,000 crores, the actual percentage of healthcare expense remains below 1% of GDP. <coughs> it remains at a mere fraction of the total budgeted expense, in fact. By comparison, the defense budget for the same period was about 5 lakh crores, 4 lakh 75 thousand crores, nearly 5 lakh crores. So that comes to about 7 times greater than the healthcare budget. So there is money for potential war with a neighboring country which may probably never happen. The war against the pandemic, that's a pittance. Let's reflect on that for a moment. And then understand the value of these strikes which have been happening. It is for us leftists to give our unconditional support to the junior doctors who are demanding their just demands for better conditions, for safety, for better pay. And we should take it forward and have a plan for a national health service in India, a nationalized health service where healthcare is accessible to all and where healthcare <coughs> is a fundamental right to all. This should be our approach in dealing with the crisis. <coughs> <coughs>